what you have witnessed this morning is the war that has been waged by evil and sinfulness and wickedness against the holiness and righteousness of Almighty God. It's a battle that began in eternity past when Lucifer, one of the angels, determined that he wanted to become like God. He said, I will make myself like the Most High. I will ascend to the height of heaven. And he rebelled against God. As a result, God cast him out of heaven. Other angelic beings fell with him. And since that day, there's been an ongoing battle between sinfulness and righteousness. It's not just a battle that takes place in the heavenlies. It's a battle that's waged in our daily lives. Listen, we live in a world that is consumed with sinfulness and evilness. It might not take on the physical form of some of the things that you've seen today, but I want you to know there's an ongoing battle. Sometimes that battle between wickedness and righteousness, sometimes it takes on the form of men flying planes into buildings. Sometimes it takes on the form of a man walking into an elementary school and opening fire. Sometimes it takes on the form of Lying and deceitfulness, adultery, drunkenness, covetousness. But it's an ongoing battle. And it's a battle that is waged in the hearts and lives of men and women, teenagers and boys and girls. Wickedness. I heard a lot of people after Friday asking the question, Why? Why? Even good Bible-believing people who said, listen, why, why does God allow wickedness to happen? In, in a very ironic way, honestly, sinfulness and wickedness is the result of one of the most gracious acts of God towards humanity. Sinfulness and wickedness is the result of God allowing humanity free choice. See, when God placed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, he placed them there and He met every need of their life. He gave them everything they would ever need. And yet, in the very middle of the garden, God placed a tree. And He told Adam and Eve, He said, Adam and Eve, eat of any tree that you want, but whatever you do, do not eat of that tree in the center. But then He gave them free will. And Adam and Eve sinned against God. They broke the law of God. They ate from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And as a result, the Word of God says that through one man's sin, through Adam's sin, death passed to all. See, every one of us here, we inherited a sin nature. We were born with one. And the result of being born with that sin nature is we were born, to the, we were born dead to the things of God. We were born cut off from God, outside of a relationship with God. See, you and I aren't just sinners by nature, we're also sinners by choice. We've chosen to sin. Now, I very seriously doubt any of you in this place would choose to fly an airplane into a building or choose to walk into an elementary school with handguns and open fire. But, listen, you've chosen to lie. You've chosen to lust. You've chosen to be greedy. You've chosen to covet. You've chosen to steal chosen to cheat. You've chosen to disobey your parents. You've chosen to dishonor your parents. See, we willfully choose to sin. Then why didn't God just create us where we didn't have a choice? See, here's what God wants. And here's what God created you for. God created you to be in a love relationship with Him. That's why He made you. He formed you so you could be in relationship with Him. God wants you to love Him. And I love what Rick Warren says. He says, love is only genuine if there's another option. See, if you had no other option, it wouldn't be genuine love. It would just simply be doing what you were created to do. But God wants you to do what you were created to do because you love Him. In the same way as parents, I want my children to obey me, not because they're scared of me or not because they're afraid of punishment. I want them to obey me because they love me. God wants you to love Him. And so as a result of that, God gave you choice. And Listen, in that, God gave us one of the greatest gifts He could ever give us because it allows us to know God at a level deeper than any other created being. 
The Word of God says in 1 Peter that angels long to look into the results of the gospel. What the gospel does in a person's life. There's not an angelic being alive in existence that understands the relationship that a Christian has with God. Because it's based on love. You know, in the, in the grand scheme of things, when God, there in eternity past, decided to create mankind with the ability to choose, He knew that Adam and Eve would choose to sin. Listen, when Adam and Eve ate of that fruit, I want you to know God went sitting up in heaven wringing His hands thinking to myself, Oh, dear Lord, what do we do now? It didn't catch God off guard. God knew. And so when God created man with the ability to choose, here's what He knew. He knew that ultimately, because of allowing man to choose, He knew ultimately He would have to die in order to purchase man's forgiveness from sin. But yet God still did it. See, that, that's where the Christmas story is not really a story about angels and demons or shepherds and wise men. It's really not even a story about the birth of Jesus. The Christmas story is a story about how much God loves you. Because when He formed you, when He formed Adam and Eve, He knew that He would have to die. Listen, there in eternity past, God knew you. The psalmist said that He knows us before we were formed in the innermost part of our mothers. He, he knew us. And He knew that your sin would cost Him one day His very life on Calvary. But He still loved you that much. And see, now the battle that's raging today... And I mean today in this place, for some of you, is a battle in your own heart. Because this morning what's going on is, is the Holy Spirit of God is revealing some things to you. It's revealing some truth to you. Some truth about the nature and character of God. Some truth about how much He loves you. Some truth about the reality of sin. And, but even in that, as God is dealing with your heart and I've had people before ask me, Pastor, how do you know when God's speaking to you? And I'm reminded of a story I heard years ago about two little boys that were outside flying a kite one day. And they had gone out and they had been out most of the afternoon flying this kite. And, uh, and they had allowed that kite to just get higher and higher. It was kind of a cloudy day. And, and eventually that kite got so high it was up in the clouds they couldn't even see the kite. They just were standing holding a spool that had string attached to it. And a man walked by. The man said, uh, what are you boys doing? Sir, we're flying a kite. The man looked up. I don't see a kite. Oh, trust me, sir, we're flying a kite. I don't see any kite. I don't believe you're flying a kite. How do you know you're flying a kite? And the little boy holding the spool said, Sir, I can feel the pull. Listen, some of you in your hearts this morning, what you're feeling is you're feeling the pull of the Holy Spirit that's telling you that what you've heard sung and what you've heard presented and what you've heard me say is the truth. You're feeling the pull. You're hearing from God today and He's telling you how much He loves you and how much He desires for you to be in this relationship with Him. But also you're hearing how much He hates your sin. See, as much as God loves you, He hates your sin. Listen, He doesn't hate you. He's not mad at you. He passionately loves you. But He hates your sin. It's part of Him being holy. And this morning, God's drawing you to Himself. But even in all of that, He's still going to give you a choice. Now a lot of you came in here this morning and you're already in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. There's already been a time where you've placed your faith in Him and you've given your heart and life to Him. But 